In this video, we will start from the structure that we created in the last video and actually calculate cash flows, which are going to be the core input for our valuation exercise. Let's start from the top. We need to link EBIT to the P&L sheet. Once we have done that, we can select an operating tax rate, which was already calculated in the P&L sheet. The product of operating tax rate and operating income, EBIT, will give us operating taxes. Very well. Now we can type sum and add EBIT and operating taxes, which results in NOPAT, net operating profit after taxes. Below NOPAT, we'll have to add depreciation and amortization in order to obtain gross cash flow. Perfect. There is a mechanism which is very important when it comes to calculating cash flows. We need to consider all balance sheet items which changed during the financial period under consideration and adjust if there was a P&L effect deriving from such change. The logic for calculating cash movements is the following. If an asset increased, there was a cash outflow. We paid money in order to buy the asset. If an asset decreased, there was a cash inflow. We received money for selling the asset. If a liability increased, there was a cash inflow. We took debt or financing. If a liability decreased, there was a cash outflow. We paid debt. This is a good logic explaining the rationale behind cash flow calculation. It will be very useful to remember it every time when you have to construct or analyze a cash flow statement. Let's go ahead and start with a calculation of cash movements arising from the change of balance sheet items. Based on what we said, the formulation for calculation of asset movements is minus this year's quantity minus last year's quantity. And here is the cash flow movement for inventory. This is an asset, and that is why I am putting a minus before the brackets and subtracting 2012 inventories minus 2011 inventories. Let's copy the same formula for the row below as trade receivables stand exactly below inventory in the BS sheet. And the same formula is applied to them as they are an asset. Next, we have trade payables. They are a liability, and their increase generates cash. Hence, we would not put a minus sign in front of the formula which calculates cash movements for liabilities. Their increase translates in a cash inflow. We are subtracting the amount of trade payables at the end of 2012 and the amount at the end of 2011. These three movements represent the investments in working capital in our model. Next, we have to calculate the cash movements of other assets and other liabilities. We have the same thing as above. The other assets movement has a minus sign in front of it, given that we are talking about an asset. The calculation of other liabilities would not have a minus sign in front of it. Every time when we approach the movement of a balance sheet item in our cash flow, we need to think whether it is an asset or a liability. The next item is CAPEX, or capital expenditures. They are capitalized costs and hence represent an asset, which the firm took on its balance sheet. Therefore, we have minus, parenthesis, this year's quantity minus last year's quantity. We should not forget that the firm expensed part of its property, plant, and equipment during the year under DNA. We have to consider that in order to obtain the full amount of CAPEX. The only two other items which we will consider at this level are grouped as other investments. These are financial assets and intangible assets. We can type the formula for the calculation of cash movements of assets, 
and, once ready, copy it in the formula bar. Only substituting the row reference number from 4 to 6. By doing this, we use the same formula, but change the row of intangible assets with the one of financial assets. In order to reconcile historical cash flow movements, we'll add extraordinary items. All the elements necessary for the calculation of unlevered free cash flow are in place. Please note that UFCF is a sum of the throws put in bold. Gross cash flow, investments in working capital, investments in other assets slash liabilities, capex, other investments, and extraordinary items. It is a good practice to indicate such things in the notes column, as this facilitates other users of your models. Thanks for watching.